Okay, I know we're running a little behind, so I, I think I'm going to talk quickly and a little less than I would have otherwise. Um, yeah, so I mean, we just just finished last night at 5 p.m. the reorg. Um, oh, okay, there we go. This is our site. This is um, this building was originally made in um, 1900, and it was the site of the uh, science building for the Normal College, which was the teachers college uh, here in Truro. Okay. So this is our floor plan before. Um, as some people have already noted, uh, this makes it look really neat and like, like, oh, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, we had things all over the floor. Um, our, our major problem was just, um, everything was just overfilled. We had several units of drawers that were just to the brim. Objects could be damaged just by opening a drawer. Um, so that is what the floor plan looked like. We had about 48% of the floor covered. And I think we estimated we were like 200% full. Like it was, this is a picture here. Um, as you can see, uh, objects on the floor. Um, we had an extra textile rack that's like a coat rack that got moved in there. Um, things piled high up on top of the units. These drawer sets that were very full. Um, these, these were some of our shelves. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we were working with, um, the baskets. And then uh, previously we had these uh, four units, they were like closets for the textiles, but they just took up a, a huge amount of space for not a lot of payoff really. Um, the, we had another kind of complication with our uh, reorg, uh, and um, it was that we had discovered a lot of duplicate accession numbers in our collection uh, between um, a five-year span. So another layer that was kind of added on to this was asking everyone to pull all the items uh, accession between 2011 and 2015 uh, and isolating them so that I can work on them soon. <laughs> Oh, and this is our program room, so another small area that was just um, supposed to just contain reproductions of a costume collection and uh, programming props and things, but uh, as we learned, had many uh, accessioned objects. And so this is the after layout here. Um, and for those of you who went upstairs, you can see the rolling shelves. We, we kind of altered this plan as we were working. I think that was the biggest takeaway for me um, about this project is just the importance of being adaptable and uh, seeing what maybe won't work as you thought and just making up a new plan. Um, yeah, so we had originally thought about a wall rack on the, on the um, right hand side of the room, but um, as you saw, we have all the hanging brackets and rods on that side instead. And when we took down those big closets, the backs of them were just pegboard. So we used that free material that we had um, to build those pegboards to line that slanted ceiling that otherwise would just be complete wasted space. So that kind of replaced the idea of this wall rack. And we, here we have the action plan um, that was developed by uh, Simon and the CCI team. Um, and this really guided us through those three days and helped us to see um, what, again, what needed to be adapted, what needed to be changed. Originally, we, we really wanted to track the accession numbers, you know, track um, locations, rather, of all the objects. And we realized that it was just creating an impossible bottleneck. And we just had to, <laughs> I had to realize that I just had to do a complete inventory um, after the fact, and we'll have to dedicate uh, some time to really get that that part of the project done as well. Okay. So here we are, here's the team here. We were, um, unlike the Ch in China where they had the blue team and the red team, we had the peg, peg and board team, we had the box team, not quite as glamorous, but this was the, a, a shelf assembly team and there they are putting the uh, U-line rolling storage units together. 
<clears throat> there, yeah, Simon in the basement, uh, he and Anita, I think were down there cleaning the shelves and getting ready because a lot of the heavy uh, materials, iron materials, the more robust, we were able to, um, you know, remove them from the third floor and take them down to the basement because, as you saw, the third floor was way too overcrowded, so we had to alleviate some things. <clears throat> so here we are making boxes as part of the box team. There was four of us for, well, we started off, our plan was four of us making boxes for three days, but we did uh, along the way uh, find a lot of issues with the boxes. So we had to, as, as Margaret said, we had to roll with the punches and come up with uh, alternative ways of securing them. And uh, we went from screws to Velcro and then three different kinds of Velcro. And then we had to use screws and Velcro. And uh, so we just had to you know, keep uh, adapting as we went along. But the, I think we, in the end we made um, 10 big boxes and 10 little boxes. And uh, they were uh, they were great. For the, they fit the shelves. Um, you know, we made them to fit the shelves in the U line storage, and um, so we were able to rehouse a lot of the things from the shoe boxes into these boxes, and then put them on the new the U line, the the moving storage. Um, here you can see Anita with her little cart. She was a little st a street girl going with her cart, and her and Simon with the grocery carts taking the artifacts from the third floor down to the basement, and, and again rehousing them into. There's a caged area down there, um, so they you know they freed up space in that area and some more other uh, empty shelves that Simon was cleaning, and uh, were able to uh, rehouse a lot of the the stuff from the third floor down there. Um, this is uh, a picture of just trying to empty the space. So we've taken a few shelves out of that room already. But it was, a very, it was very tight in there. So uh, sometimes there was a lot of people kind of fumbling over each other. It was, you know, when we were moving everything out, it got really uh, busy and congested. Um, so here's some empty shelves as we're progressing uh, rather quickly. I must say that the project, like 3 o'clock yesterday, I thought there's no way in heck we're getting out of here tonight. Um, it's kind of like in the... You know, when you're putting together an exhibit, you pull an all-nighter. I thought, this is it, we're here. Um, and then at 5 o'clock, like two hours later, it was like, oh my God, we're done? So I don't know how we, we did what we did in those two, last two hours. It was crazy. So here, you can see the main floor on the third floor. So we have taken everything out of the little room, and it's now in, in the, the main floor space. Um, so you can see how congested it is. See the pile of, of boxes there that we had made. Um, so just a picture into, oh, this is a Margaret's accession room. Um, now, unfortunately, she's got a huge project ahead of her. Um, as she had said, there was a lot of renumbering of, of artifacts. So they were pulled, put in there, as well as items with no numbers. So her, the space in there, I think now, will, did you show them? I didn't, and I should have. Well, I'm maybe, sorry. yeah, it's okay. Probably <laughs> not. Maybe at the end I can show people. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's chock block full now, so she really has her work cut out yeah. for her. So I don't envy her of that job at all. The empty spaces that you saw, <laughs> what seems like empty space up in the storage room now, yeah. that's not empty space. It's reserved for the duplicates that yeah. will go back exactly. into that space eventually. Yeah. Not a lot of space to grow. No, no. no. But at least it will be organized. So the empty room here, you can see the, the peak there, the steep walls and whatnot. Um, so, um, and here we are rehousing, taking things from shelves and putting them in the new boxes. Um, but I mean, just look at the stuff on the, on the main floor there. I mean, it's chock-a-block full. Um, so uh, this is the, the peg board team, or the peg and board team. Um, the great idea, you know, re, uh, rehousing the, the, the stuff in this way. I mean, those sloped ceilings, it really utilized them, so it was great. Um, here's a construction crew. <laughs> Jason came in very handy. <laughs> we needed more power tools, though. We did need more power tools. <laughs> okay, so if you want to oh, talk yeah, about sure. the uh, schedule. All right, yeah, so as you can see, we were filling in the action plan as we went, and um, you can see part of it, uh, we started filling it in red, and then we started putting X's through, because that was the part where we were going to record all the new locations, <laughs> and we had to abandon that ship. Um, but it, it was a really great way to just track our pro progress as we went and uh, conceptualize, see what we had left. Um, this is the last day, so we kind of regrouped into um, pagan space rather than pagan board <laughs> and things like that. Um, yeah, to finish up the remaining tasks and really keep things organized. 
So now I'm going to show the best part, um, the before. <laughs> so this is, this was the reality on Monday. And now this is the after. And again, before <laughs> and after. <laughs> I think there's one more. <laughs> before and after. Yeah. Yeah, I think seeing those, like, it, it really sunk in for me, just like what we accomplished um, as a group. And I'll just, there, this, this is our group photo mm -hmm. last, yesterday at around 5.15, I think. And um, yeah, I guess I'd just like to say, uh, again, I'd want to uh, acknowledge um, the funding that we received from the Museum's Assistance Program, because we wouldn't have been able to afford that shelving that just, you know, it just, made the room workable <laughs> when it wasn't before and and I'd like to thank everyone who was here all the participants and Simon and the CCI team and Anita and uh, Estelle and everybody <laughs> for all your help and uh, I think I, I think that I think that's it thank you so much <laughs>